Hey guys, this is Austin John 22 coming to you today with another review. If everything goes well and I can stop stuttering, this will actually be the second review I get up in the same day, so, you know, kudos to me. Um, but yeah, today we are looking at the generation's equivalent of Strafe. Yes, Strafe is right. Had to check my notes for a second. Um, which I have already covered in a, a spin attack form and concluded that it was actually a surprisingly good figure. Today we are going to take a look at the Generations version, uh, the proper deluxe version, uh, for those who aren't sure what the Generations line actually is compared to the other stuff, and see how he measures up overall compared to that one. And uh, I'll go right out and say, I'll come right out and say right off the bat, this guy is better. Um, still not quite what I wanted, but better, and I do really like him, and I think you guys will like him too. But first, let's get this review properly started. The way we start all of our reviews, by getting this guy transformed up through the power of jump cuts. And here we have Strafe in his alt mode, and no, this isn't some kind of crazy pterodactyl, or rather pteranodon, gerwalk mode. This is his actual beast mode, and it does bring up the first thing I'm a bit disappointed with regarding this figure. Uh, on the spin attack figure, despite the fact that the transformation of the legs is actually fairly similar, the legs actually shortened for beast mode, and therefore lengthened again for robot mode, and in this, on this figure they're effectively the same length, making him really tall, and you can kind of, I don't know, it, see his, his knees don't, don't actually bend in this mode either, so you can kind of hunch him over and make him look a little shorter. But that's really the best you're going to get. Otherwise, though, um, absolutely fantastic in terms of detailing, especially. You can see he's got all these layers of armor in his chest and in his legs, and in his still very visible robot arms, though on the other on the underside of the wing, they, uh, they are subject to the jet former rule and therefore are excusable because there's really nowhere else to put them here, really. Um, he does have the two heads again, and they are very well articulated, uh, rotating and uh, bending and have with opening mouths, and uh, very cool kind of emerald optics. Uh, he does have weapon storage. His swords store along the wing edges, which are serrated, which is kind of cool. And he does have a spot for this crossbow thingy on his back and the missile does fire. Now I'm never going to find that missile. I actually found it. I'm, I'm impressed with myself. But yeah, it's just a little, um, it's one of the ones with little balls and you use friction and pops them out. It's nothing special, but it's, you know, appreciated. An extra gimmick for the toy that isn't super intrusive. Um, looks good. He's got, he's, I mean, his wings can flap and, uh, he has this uh, waist joint, which is completely superfluous, as with a lot of the Dinobots. They don't need them for transformation, and yet they have them, which is always appreciated as well. Um, another thing that kind of disappoints me about this figure, going from the spin attack figure, I mean, this, this guy's clearly larger. I don't even think I need to bring in the spin attack figure to prove that, um, which is good, because I don't actually have it anymore. But uh, there he is next to Slug, which isn't a huge... Uh, hugely impressive comparison because Slug is kind of smallish in beast mode, but you can see, I mean, Slug is not that much smaller than, say, Bumblebee, who's about this this length uh, in vehicle mode and about, I don't know, yay high. You can see there's quite a size difference here. Uh, I wish I actually had my Age of Extinction Bumblebee with me while I'm doing this review, as uh, Strafe is kind of Bumblebee's buddy. They even say that in... Uh, his character write-up for the movie that once he partners up with Bumblebee to take down Stinger, the red Bumblebee, and several of the other Decepticons in the movie, they actually become pretty close friends as I'm brushing hair off my table. Uh, it looks good. I, I'm not going to say it doesn't. I just wish... I just wish that this weren't the case. Let's get him transformed and I'll show you... I'll show you what I mean. For his legs... You literally just reverse them. It's literally just that. Uh, not really all that different from 
the spin attack figures, and I, I'm, I'm, I was wrong, they do extend a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. Um, as you can see, it gives him good hip joints and good knee joints and a good rotation joint there. Up top, his head folds out. Actually, bring these down first. His head folds out exactly the same way as it does on the spin attack figure. Yeah, just kind of like so, and then his pteranodon heads fold in to his chest exactly the same way they do on the spin attack figure. And then his arms unpeg and his hands straighten out. And this is really the only part that's really different to the transformation. Yeah, remove his weapon from his back. And then I'm actually going to take one of these swords off. I don't usually pose him with more than one at a time. You fold these up, and you, you can leave them out like this. Uh, it looks really cool, I think. But it also takes up a lot of room on the shelf. And uh, you do see in the movie that he wears his wings in robot mode kind of like a cloak. So I do like to fold these down and make it look like he's got his cloak draped behind him like a cape. And uh, straighten his legs out a little bit now. And kind of like Slug, his legs are weirdly shaped. And so you kind of have to bow his legs a little bit to get him to stand. Which, uh, now I'm not going to be able to get him to stand. Now that I'm actually doing the review. Uh, there we go. But it's not bad, too bad. And, uh, I mean, he does look so much better than the spin attack figure. He's just he's just worlds beyond it in terms of molding and detailing. Um, speaking of the detailing, get a closer look. Um, really cool. Emerald green eye visor things. Nice uh, detailing there. He does have the big uh, rubber plastic tails which you can kind of stick through there and they will kind of stick out further back which is kind of nice. He's he's nice. He's a nice looking figure. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I I do like the way he looks a lot, and um, so don't. So I want you. To, I want you to keep that in mind when I say that. Overall, this figure really disappoints me. I I still recommend him. He I mean he does everything he's supposed to do. He transforms. He looks decent in both modes. Got a great color scheme. This really cool blue silver with the like richer royal blue just looks great. Um, and he, because of the way his wrists move, you can kind of have him in like this standby pose where he's got his weapon lowered at his side, which I think is really cool because it makes him look like the ready warrior. He's ready to strike, but he's not overly aggressive or whatever, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, gives him this kind of cool, this coolness to him. And, um, and like I said, I do recommend it, but that's really just because he's a Dinobot and he, he's cool as a Dinobot, and, uh, I don't know, I, I, I think anyone who likes the Dinobots and likes Knights should pick up all the Dinobot figures, but this one just, it doesn't blow me away like some of the other ones have. If I were to say, if I were to rank him next to the other ones, I would say that, um, well, what's his name? The, the, the Spinosaurus. I, I don't remember his name. It, it, it's in one of my reviews. The Spinosaurus he got, who I do not have with me, or else I would show them side by side. He's, he's a fantastic figure. He's got a couple of issues. I, I think that, um, bring the figure down a little bit, but for the most part he's a solid figure in both modes and in his transformation. He looks like a dinosaur in his dinosaur mode, he looks like a knight in his robot mode, and his transformation is solid. This guy, he looks like a kind of genetically malformed dinosaur in his dinosaur mode, though he does look pretty on model, so I can't complain too much about it. Um, but his transformation just feels oversimplified. And um, his robot mode, while still looking good, still has some problems, as I mentioned, with the, with the legs. And um, the fact that he doesn't really ever want to hold this gun straight, it's kind of weird. Um, he also has the 
uh, in and out flex arm problem that some figures have. I mean, he's got he has theoretical 360 degree uh, shoulder movement, but it is pathetically hampered by his wings and his uh, Trinidad head. Um, but rate, rating him, ranking him with the others, he would be, I would say the uh, Spinosaurus, uh, Scorn, that's his name. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I would say the Spinosaurus guy is a uh, Scorn. <laughs> is a uh, is, is ahead of him. Grimlock is ahead of him. Um, either version of Grimlock. Uh, and Slug is probably a bit below him. So he's kind of mid-range as far as all the Dinobots go, but still I do recommend him. Um, he's definitely better than the alternatives as far as the character goes, and, and he's not a bad figure. He's just like I said, he's not what quite what I wanted. But yeah, I hope you guys liked the review. That's about it. Um, be uh, Feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined. In the description down below is a link to my blog as well as to my collections video. Check both of those out. And if you see something in that collections video that you would like me to review, let me know and I will see what I can do. This has been Awesome John 22 and I will talk to you guys later.